Hey guys, uh, look at this. So this is really cool. Um, this is actually, it's a, it's a, it's a Christmas ornament, uh, but it's joust. Okay. And, uh, you think, oh, that's kind of cool. looks like a joust machine, whatever. Uh, but you can turn it on. Watch. Oh, now the problem is you can't actually play it. It just has this little fake screen going and a bunch of sound effects. So those joysticks don't work, but how cool is that? Oh, I'm going to play Joust later. That sounds like fun. Today, I wanted to talk about this concept that Diablo Immortal is suddenly really important to gamers again. Okay, I was there in 2018 in the audience at BlizzCon when they announced that thing and it dropped like a dead fish. Nobody was interested in it. People were like kind of actively angry about it, despite the fact that nobody was saying they had to play this game. But a lot of people, what they heard on that stage, despite what Blizzard intended, was, hey, we're going to take your beloved franchise, everybody, and we're going to turn it into a mobile game, which in 2018 was maybe peak, like everyone's mad at loot boxes and everyone's mad at 400 currencies and all these problems with, with the mobile game market. So core gamers were not having it. And then you had a game that nobody was hearing about anymore. It was like silence coming out of Blizzard. There were no big, well, there were a couple, I guess, a couple of alpha uh, attempts here and there, but it was still just on the phone and they were real quiet and low key about it, not making a big, huge deal out of it or pushing a lot of PR around it. It was just kind of there for a little bit and then gone again. For me, I feel like I haven't heard about the game it, it, for like four years. It felt like we just kind of went blank on what Diablo Immortal was. And it was hard to say why. Were they uh, still you know, trying to recover from the backlash? Was uh, the game problematic for some other reason that we didn't know about? Like there were a lot of questions, very few answers. And that's just what we had. Add on top of that, Blizzard had a bunch of problems, as you know, recently. And all of the internal issues around harassment and other stuff with them and Activision, that exploded in everybody's face. So even less of our minds were on something like Diablo Immortal. And even since then, we'd had a Diablo 4 proper announcement in 2019, the very following year. And that game is, you know, looks like proper Diablo. That's the one everyone's got their eye on. So once again, Diablo Immortal, what is it? Who knows? Don't know. Why do we care? But then suddenly, something happens. Diablo Immortal gets announced 14 days ago or so as a PC game also, same day and date as it's coming to mobile, which is what everyone thought its destiny was going to be, and that was it. You were going to play it on mobile, that would be the game you would ever get, and there it is. Like it or not, it's on mobile. And though it would have controller support and you know, stuff like the backbone would work with it and so on, it was still just like, well, there's your mobile game, cool, whatever, I'm waiting for four, uh, or whatever you're doing with Blizzard games right now. But then you're like, oh... PC, that's where I play my Diablo games. That's where I got mouse and keyboard control. That's where I prefer to play my action RPGs. And it's coming there, and it's free to play? Hmm. Well, in light of things like, I don't know, Path of Exile and how well it did, and certainly newer stuff like uh, Lost Ark, people went, oh, so I play those. I don't, I'm not complaining that much about that. Maybe I won't complain over here as long as some of the free to play stuff isn't too egregious and, and too predatory. We don't really know yet, but, but anyway, suddenly minds are turning and, and gears are switching and people are going, Oh, maybe I'll have a little bit. Plus you hear about things like cross play pr progression and account unity across platforms. So if I've got it on the phone and I'm playing it over there, I could just easily hop on my PC and play it there. And then maybe they'll put it on consoles and other stuff. And who knows, maybe the switch will get it. Who knows? These are the thoughts going through some gamers heads. Apparently, Blizzard went back and forth quite a bit on this decision as to make it PC as well as mobile. In an article published by PC Gamer, uh, written by Molly Taylor, this was published 14 days ago, uh, they had all sorts of stuff to say. In fact, um, one of the reasons it seems that Blizzard wanted to make this a PC experience as well is they figured a lot of players, especially Diablo fans who are used to playing on PCs, would play this through an emulator anyway. And a lot of people do this with mobile ports. So they were swayed a little bit by that ahead of the port. And the developer, it says here, quote, seems keen not to piss in anyone's cornflakes again, outlining everything from the initial decision making to all the ways it was trying to, quote, stay true to the Diablo experience, unquote, with these traditional PC controls. So here's the point of why I'm here today and why I forgot to take off these headphones, because normally I don't have them on and I look, I don't know, some people think it looks better when you don't have your headphones on. It's really not part of the story. Let me, let me continue. So how crazy is it with all the stuff we've seen going on at Blizzard lately, 
player backlash because they don't like where their games are headed or quiet on the front of things like you know overwatch 2 diablo 4 slow progression we don't know when these games are coming out nothing new coming out of them put on top of that uh, a very not i shouldn't say bored but an unhappy player base in world of warcraft who just don't like where the game is and then stack on top of that numerous hardcore uh horrible company culture harassment issues that they still haven't you know dealt with entirely and on top of that, a big, massive acquisition by Microsoft uh, for the entire studio, plus everything else connected to Activision. Not only that, despite Hearthstone having a pretty good time, uh, Alpha comes up for the multiplayer Alpha comes up for Overwatch 2, and basically nobody likes it, or at least that's most of the word out there, is people are like, eh, it's kind of Overwatch 1, what are we doing? So there's that. Then you got uh, the announcement of a brand new WoW expansion, which looks fine, but isn't really addressing the most of the problems people have with World of Warcraft right now and just kind of left me, honestly, a little bit flat. We've talked about this before. So isn't it funny that now myself, and I know a lot of players like me, are jonesing for the PC version of a game that we were sure was going to be the worst idea Blizzard ever had. Nobody had anything good to say about Immortal for all of these years, and now suddenly we're like, ooh. Maybe I'm in. Maybe I'm okay. Maybe I will play this game. I don't want to speak for everybody. Some of you are hearing this right now going, Scott, I don't feel that way. And I'm going to register my uh, my upsetness here in the uh, comments, in the, in the YouTube comments. And you know what? You should do that. You should totally do that. I'd love to hear your perspective. I'm, I'm not throwing you under the bus. My, my point is, though, overall, the news about the PC compatibility of the game and the cross-platform Com, uh, compatibility and progression has landed pretty well for me as an ARPG player and a lot of other players. So I actually think this was absolutely not only the right move for them, maybe should have always been the move they were supposed to make, just make a big multi-platform free to play platform called immortal, which means it lives forever and just have it be the Diablo war zone or battle battleground type game that people just play all the time and still have your hallmark moments of, Here's Diablo 4, an incredible standalone product, and it'll be whatever it's going to be. But meanwhile, we've always got this thing running underneath it. We're always running Immortal. Like, maybe they should have always done this. But at the very least, given the current climate of everything I've talked about today, for some reason, this is coming as really welcome news. And I'm not even sure why I'm so excited about it or happy about it. I didn't think I would be. But here we are. I'm ready to play. I'm going to play Diablo Immortal, and I'm going to play it on my PC. All right, before we get out of here, my good friend Brian Ibbett and co-host of The Morning Stream and also one of the co-hosts of Film Sack, our weekly film show, he went down to a pinball event, a pinball um, <laughs> festival, if you will, down in Texas a couple of months ago or a month ago or so. And while I was there, he thought of a bunch of Film Sack movies that we've seen and then matched those up with equivalent named pinball machines and he made a very short video about it and i think it's totally rad and i want to show it here so enjoy this and i'll see you next time Lava tubes.